What's up guys, Technology Vlog here and today I have a quick unboxing, overview and review of the ASUS Radeon R9-280X. So this is ASUS's Direct CU2 TOP or Top Radeon R9-280X which is basically a redefined I believe 7970 if not I'll make a correction when I'm editing this video. It has 3GB of GDDR5 memory, DGI, VRM, Super Ally Power, Stable Overclocking, GPU Tweak, software, which I don't even think anybody really uses, and it's the top or TOP overclocked edition. Now, I've heard a lot about these graphics cards um, that it's basically like half and half. It's 50-50. 50 on the left, let's say, have great experiences with this card. This card is fantastic. This card is great. It does everything well. It's a great gaming card, etc. The other 50 on the right say that it's a crappy card, that there's a lot of issues with it. There's artifacts. There's uh, errors. There's just a bunch of stuff that's wrong with it and that to fix it, you have to actually over, uh, lower, underclock the overclock that it came with, which a lot of people have been reporting that, which is very odd to know that you know, basically, if you buy one of these graphics cards, you might have an issue with it or whatever. And I, I was constantly researching about it. I was constantly researching on different sites you can buy, like Newegg, Amazon, eBay, and stuff like that. And, um, well, I, I mean, eBay is not really a site to go for reviewing, but the reviews there were also kind of like 50-50. Basically, that's where I found out that this graphics card was basically like a 50-50 chance of getting either a good one or a bad one. Now, I bought this off eBay because I found it at a really great price. And I, mess I messaged the seller telling him, like, what do you do with it? Uh, and he said that he did, you know, gaming on it, PC gaming. So that's exactly why I bought this card, because I'm going to do some PC gaming, obviously. And so since he did it, he said that he had a great experience with it, and that it's all, it's all working and all that. So I'm like, okay, good. This might be one of the good cards then. However, some people have been also saying that, like, it might be a driver issue. Because, for instance, some people actually install different drivers on this graphics card, and all the issues just go away. Others just constantly have issues, even with driver uh, updates or downgrades or whatever. They just keep having issues. So I pretty much just decided to go for it and see if, if this card will actually treat me right and not give me any issues and all that, especially since the seller has already told me that he's had a great experience with it and that he had no issues and all that. So with that said, let's go ahead and get along with this unboxing of the ASUS DirectCU2 Top Radeon R9280X. That is a long saying. So here we have the front of the box, which I've already covered. And on the right side, we have just detailed, not detailed information, but just a quick, quick information about the DirectCU2 top cooler, 20% cooler, three times quieter, and then just how it looks like and how it all works. The name of the graphics card and just a little bit of details like the top overclocked edition and three gigabytes of memory. On the left side, it's the same thing. And on the back is where all the detail is at. Details about the direct CU2 cooler, the DGI plus VRM or VRAM, I believe, super alloy power, and the GPU tweak software. We also have in very small text that I'm pretty sure you guys can't even see or read because it's dark down there. It's pretty much just saying that it has powerful features like it's powered by the R9280X, it has 3 gigabytes of DDR5 video memory. That's odd, it says DDR5, it's not GDDR5. That's weird. It also Mentions its connectivity like the Display Port, DVI, and HDMI. Uh, it also mentions DirectX 11.2 and OpenGL 4.3 support, and it has a. It mentions the exclusive Innovation GPU Tweak software, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and down here we have a little diagram of all the inputs. So, like I've already mentioned, DVI, VGA if it comes with a converter or if you have a converter rather, HD, HDMI. I was about to say HD TV because the TV's right there, and Display Port. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this sucker out of the box then. Because that's obviously the best part of an unboxing, right? Instead of just all the talking and whatnot. Though I do want to keep the box in good shape. Let me go ahead and take it out. There we go. These boxes are big. Asus is known to make huge boxes for their products but also because their products are also huge. Let me go ahead and adjust the camera angle and I'll be right back. All right, here we go, better angle. So here we have the black nice box with the golden text saying Asus in search of incredible. And yes, that's my TV in the background. So let's go ahead and open it up just like that, all fancy like. Let me actually bring it more forward because I gotta, there we go. So right here we have all the 
I believe like instruction stuff like CDs and Crossfire Bridge and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and open that, which I actually like opening this because I don't know. I just like little things like this where it just opens, I don't know, like, you know, the way or something. So let's see. We got, I believe there's still more in here. Yes, there is. I think that's it. Yeah, all right. So we have two six pins to an eight pin connector, PCIe connector, crossfire bridge, driver CD, and I believe the overclocking tweak, and the speed setup guide. That's pretty much it. Not really big on accessories for this graphics card, but that's to be expected. And then under here, we have the huge graphics card itself. So let me go ahead and take it out and place it on top of the box. So here we have this humongous card. Humongous and very heavy, actually. Let me go ahead and take it out of the uh, anti-static bag. Oh, wow, that is huge in person. Sheesh. So here we have it. The beautiful R9. 280x direct c2 version from asus now i can actually see a little bit of scratching from the previous owner who had this and a little bit of dust and stuff too but that's quite all right like i said i, I like i mentioned i bought this off on ebay because i got a pretty good deal on it and the guy didn't really use it as much either so you know so yeah here it is with its nice red and black finish i don't know why but this finish kind of just reminds me of like a like a race car, a, a Ferrari or something like that, you know? And we have one, two, three heat pipes showing on the bottom of the graphics card. We have the PCIe, what version is this? I believe, oh man, I do not, I can't recall right now. I'll probably put like a text or something of what PCIe version it is. It might be 3.0? I'm sounding really stupid right now, am I? <laughs> anyway, here we have the connectors video connectors we got two dvi hdmi and display port a full display port actually not mini display and on top here we have a huge heat pipe and the label direct c2 and we got the power supply connector six pin eight pin which by the way on their website they mentioned that this needs a 750 watt power supply minimum one other thing i forgot to mention is See these two fans and see how this one's a bit different than this one. This one has thinner fins. This one has thicker fins. This one has like a design right here around the logo. This one is just, you know, like a basic fan. I think the reason why it's like this is because this fan is specialized for the GPU that is literally like under this fan. So this is going to provide all the cooling for the GPU. And this fan over here is to cool off everything else like the VRAM and the uh, other stuff that I cannot remember right now. But yeah, that's actually pretty interesting how these two fans are actually different and how they designed it. And that's the end of the unboxing and overview portion of this video. As some of you may or may not know, I have a Gigabyte Radeon HD 7870OC graphics card right now and that's what I'm upgrading from. So what I'm actually going to do is a comparison between the 7870OC versus the 280X or 9280X and see how much of a difference of performance there is now I've already done some research and there's pretty big performance differences between this card and the card I actually currently have and just the chipsets in general the, or the GPU chipsets whatever you want to call them so I'm actually gonna be doing some benchmarking on this graphics card like I already did on my uh, 7870 OC and those benchmarks are pretty much just playing uh, a bit of the first mission for Battlefield 4 the heaven benchmark the valley benchmark and the um, Firmark benchmark, which is just to test out the temperatures and how loud the fan goes and all that good stuff. So, without further ado, let me go ahead and install this to my computer and get the benchmarks ready and all that good stuff, get the data ready, and I'll come back to you guys in a different angle. And there she is, plugged in and ready to go, except for the uh, power connectors here, but I'll do that in a bit. But wow, this is a humongous and long card, like I mentioned earlier. It's right next to this 120 millimeter fan on my uh, Air 540 case from Corsair. Great case, by the way. A lot of room and all that. But man, this is huge. So there's something neat right there. If my camera will focus. 
There we go. When you plug those two power connectors in, there's two green LEDs to confirm you that it is getting power when you turn on your power supply. It's pretty nifty. All right, so here we have the results of both video cards, the 7870OC from Gigabyte and the R9280X from Asus. So hopefully this is easy to read. As you can see, I have the GPU section, idle section, load section, battlefield four frames per second, heaven score, valley score, and uh, the stress program I used for the temperatures and the temp monitor I used for the temperatures and just all these numbers and whatnot. And the min, max, average, sections for the uh, Battlefield 4 Heaven and Valley benchmarks. So on the 7870 OC, I got the idle temps of 38 Celsius. On the load, I got 76 Celsius. For Battlefield 4, I got a minimum of 29 frames per second, maximum 79 frames per second, and an average of 46 frames per second. For Heaven, I got a 7.4 minimum frames per second, which is pretty freaking low. On the max frames per second, I got a 77.7, .7, lucky number seven, three of them actually and on the average I got a 33.4 frames per second for the valley benchmark on the minimum frames per second I got 14.4 for the max frames per second at 61 and the average frames per second was 31.6 for the heaven score it was 841 for the valley score it was 1323 or 1323 so as you can see these scores and these frames per seconds weren't really that bad I mean it's pretty good even for uh, for an old car the 7870 OC is a uh, how old is it like a few years probably like two three four years old and it still does fairly well i mean i ran battlefield 4 at max settings i ran heaven at um extreme preset i ran the valley benchmark at extreme hd preset and it did fairly well except for the low minimum frames per second on the heaven and valley benchmarks but those aren't really that big of a deal because the average frames per second on both benchmarks were actually pretty decent they weren't under 30. So let's go ahead and go to the R9 280X graphics card. For idle, I got 40 Celsius. For load, I got 80 Celsius around there. For Battlefield 4, the frames per second I got minimum were 44. Maximum, I got 90. Average, I got 65. On Heaven, the benchmark, I got 17.3 on minimum, 105.9 on the maximum, and the average was 45.4. For the Valley benchmark, I got a minimum of 21 frames per second, maximum of 85.4, and an average of 43.5. For the Heaven score, I got 1144, or 1144, and for the Valley score, I got 1813, or 1813. So those are the results I got for both graphics cards, as you can see. The R9 280X definitely, obviously, as well, beats the 7870OC by a substantial amount, if I could say so myself. There's pretty big differences in here. Um, for some people, it might not be. Some people might not see a 20 frame, or rather a 19 frame per second increase on Battlefield 4 as a, uh, a huge upgrade or a huge um, difference or whatever. But to me, I think it is, personally. I mean, the average for Battlefield 4 on the 7870 was a 46. The average... Uh, for the R9 280X on Battlefield 4 was a 65, so it kept it over 60 while the 7870 OC was under 60. Now, everybody has different eyes. My eyes can easily tell when a game or video or whatever is at 60 frames a second, and it could tell when it's not at 60 frames a second, so let's say like 30 frames or under 60 frames a second, so like 40 frames a second. My eyes are very, I guess, sensitive for lack of a better word. Uh, to those type of differences, but for some people they, they might not even notice a difference uh, So it just depends on how you feel how you see things and all that good stuff As for the scoring on the heaven benchmark section the 280x got a let me see About a 300 point increase and on the valley benchmark it got a 500 point increase about there if you want to be accurate it's around 490 I believe now as for the temperatures you can see that the 7870 OC actually had better temperatures than the 280X. Now keep this in mind, the Gigabyte 7870 OC somewhat has a better cooler, it's debatable, towards the 280X. The 7870 OC cooler, Gigabyte's cooler, has three fans on it. The 280X only has two. Now granted, they both have different types of technologies of cooling down their GPUs. It seems from these results that Gigabytes is better than Asus is, however, it's not that big of a difference. For the idle, it's only two frames, sorry, not frames, two degrees Celsius up and only about four to maybe eight, just estimating 
degrees Celsius differences in load. The little symbol you see next to the C on the 280X, the reason why I put that was because on the 7870OC, when it was being on full load using Fermark, the fan literally went up to, I think, almost 100%. It was pretty high up. The fan percentage was pretty high up. It was like from 80 to 100, somewhere around there. And so the graphics cover is actually pretty loud just to keep that 76 Celsius. For the 280X, when it got 80 Celsius or around there, it was at a 47%. It had a 47% fan speed on the 280X on load. And it still kept it around the low 80s, I'd say. So I tried to test it out with 100% uh, fan speed. Now keep in mind, 100% fan speed on anything is very loud, especially for this 280X. So when I turned it on to 100%, speed it was very loud however it did keep the temperatures around the low 70s beating the low temperatures on the 7870OC now that's on 100% fan speed which nobody ever wants to have but that's just there just to uh you know clarify some things so other than that i'd say i'm very impressed with the R9280X from Asus and just the GPU in general the 280X GPU i'm very impressed there were no issues actually. Let me emphasize this. There were absolutely no issues at all. There was no artifacts. There was no errors. There was no auto shutdowns. There was no fan, nothing. It was perfect. It, it worked right out of the box. So I guess what the deal was with Asus's uh, bad graphics cards of the 280X series, I guess there was just like a bad batch, a, a big bad batch that some people may have gotten, and then the other people may have gotten the good batch or whatever, so I don't know. I guess it was an issue that Asus had in the beginning, maybe when the 280X was a brand new graphics card, but so far, I encountered nothing bad at all, nothing from what the bad reviews I've seen uh, on like Newegg and Amazon and all that. It's been working perfectly fine. I was able to play Battlefield 4 perfectly. The benchmarks were perfect. It's starting to rain outside. Anyway, but yeah, everything worked out perfectly. So I'm very impressed, very happy, and I would actually recommend getting this graphics card as well. One other thing I forgot to mention about the graphics card were the core clocks and the memory clocks. The 7870OC core clock factory default was at 1100 and the memory clock was at 1400. The 280X's factory default clocks were at 1070 or 1070 on the core clock and 1600 on the memory clock. Now that's only a 30 megahertz decrease from the 7870OC, and I'm talking about the 280X here, and a 200 megahertz increase from the memory clock from the 7870OC. So there you have it guys, this was the ASUS Radeon R9 280X unboxing, overview, review, and comparison against the 7870OC from Gigabyte. Thank you guys so much for watching, and like I mentioned earlier, there were no issues with this, I didn't have any driver issues, I didn't have any graphics card issues, I didn't have any artifacts, nothing, it worked right out of the box, did its job, I'm very impressed by it, and yeah, also, I hope you guys enjoyed that new segment I did where I had a Microsoft Excel data sheet of all the data I gathered from the uh, graphics cards. I may try and do that more often when I do these kind of videos, like, you know, of like a new product I got or something where I could do an, a review or an overview or whatever of it. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing that, and I feel like it gives you guys more data and more of like a, you know, like a, oh, how good is this car or how better is it than a certain car or whatever. So anyway, again... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a good Christmas because that's coming up. And, you, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, well, I hope you have a good um, holiday or break if you're having one. But yeah, again, once more, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.